later on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is you're, I'm going to show you about um, sterile suctioning. And what you'll have to demo on Monday is uh, sterile trach suctioning. But you can, this same technique can be used for um, nasopharyngeal, oral pharyngeal, oral tracheal, um, but you always want to be sterile, have a sterile catheter and sterile glove on when you're suctioning a patient's airway because the airway itself is sterile. So um, we have a patient, this patient has a tracheostomy, and there's a few things that we have to make sure that we do in caring for a patient with a tracheostomy. And the first of those is making sure we always have emergency equipment. And students will sometimes say, well, Lynn, isn't it important that we first go in and we look at our patient and we see how they're doing? Well, the problem is if you go and look at your patient, see how they're doing, see they're not doing well, and you go to turn to get your emergency equipment and there's nothing there, then you're kind of stuck. So every patient with a tracheostomy should have an Ambu bag with a special tracheostomy adapter on the end that's hooked up to oxygen. They should have working suction. Okay, so this is our suction machine. We can check that it's working by putting it over to regular, which is going to do continuous suction and just checking it. But there's at least one, if not more, suction catheter kits in the room. Okay, so a suction canister doesn't work very well without a suction catheter kit. And then also we want a spare tracheostomy. It's usually it's still sterile, it's all wrapped up, and it's in a box, and it's usually taped above the head of the bed. Okay, but you've got to make sure that you're looking for your emergency equipment. This is just an, emer um, an extra trait. So it's, it's a, it, it was, did come in a box. This is what uh, we found in here. Okay, so why would we suction a patient? What would be a reason to suction a patient with a tracheostomy? Okay, maybe they have it, maybe it's blocked, maybe there's a plug, okay, and we can see that they're not getting air in. Maybe there's excessive secretions, or maybe there's secretions and they're not able to cough them out on their own. So those would be why we would um, suction. So besides secretions when we suction, what else are we going to be pulling out with our suctioning? Okay, we're going to be in the trachea, so think there shouldn't be any blood in the trachea. We're going to be pulling out oxygen, right? We're, as we're suctioning, we're also going to be taking out whatever oxygen is in their lungs and, and taking it out. So that's why prior to suctioning, you want to be able to hyperventilate or hyperoxygenate your patient. And you do that by attaching your Ambu bag and giving them a few full deep breaths prior to starting. Okay? So they're hyperventilated, they're hyperoxygenated. Okay, so the equipment that we need when we actually go to suction is we need a sterile suction catheter kit, we need working suction, and we need sterile saline in a bottle. Okay. So what we want to do to start is we want to open up our package. All right, and inside is an inner package, but it's also sterile inside. And we want to be able to open up our package. Now, some of the um, packages we were working with earlier had the little container I'm about to show you tucked right in here. This one, it's actually inside. So the technique is going to be the same, but where you find the little container for the saline might be slightly different. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. So my sterile paper, what part is sterile and what part is not sterile? Mm -hmm. The inside is sterile, right, and the outer one inch is not sterile. All right, now I want to be able to, and this is the problem with, okay, I want to be able to get to that little box, and I can handle it by the end, because where does it have to stay sterile? Inside, right. Okay, so I just put it like that, and that's what kind of uh, pumps it open. I can set it down. Before I put my sterile gloves on, I'm going to want to fill it with saline, right? Because I can't touch the, the saline bottle once I have gloves on. Okay, so if it's already been open, but it's been within the past 24 hours, what will I do? I will lift it, right? So 
So I'm going to pour some saline into the container. Set that aside. I'm ready to put on my sterile gloves. So first I'm going to put on my dominant hand. I do that by reaching with my non-dominant. All right, how will I get my second glove on? Right, in the cup with my thumb up like a hitchhiker and my uh, glove up and off the table so I don't accidentally drag the fingers over anything non-sterile. Okay, so I have two sterile hands right now, right? So my sterile hands can only touch sterile things and remain sterile. But I'm going to have to touch my suction catheter tubing, right? So one hand, probably your non-dominant, needs to become non-sterile. So my left hand for me is going to be non-sterile. I'll be able to reach over, get my suction catheter, turn on my suction. Notice my sterile hand is still above my waist. I've got it in my eyesight so I don't accidentally touch anything. This is sterile inside here, so I can go ahead and I can pull off. I can pull this out. Okay, and what I want to do. I want to go ahead and attach the end of this to my suction. Okay, so I attach the end, making sure my sterile glove does not touch my non-sterile tubing at all. All right, and there I've got a sterile hand with a sterile item in it and a non-sterile hand with a non-sterile item in it. So what I want to do to start, I want to not only test that my suction is working, I also want to lubricate the end of my catheter tip before I put it in. So what I do there is I put it in my saline, I put my finger over the hole, okay, and it draws up the saline and it gets the end of the catheter nice and damp. So when my finger is over the hole, it sucks. When my finger is off the hole, it doesn't suck. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tip of the suction catheter now down through the middle of the trach tube, so, and I'm going to feed it in until I feel resistance. When I'm resi at resistance, I'm actually at the bottom of the trachea where the bifurcation occurs. I don't want to start suctioning there though because I don't want to damage that. So when I feel that resistance, I'm going to pull up about a half an inch and then I'm going to start suctioning with my finger on and off the suction as I make swirling motions back out. So I'm only suctioning on the way out, never on the way in. Okay. So I'm going to put the uh, suction tubing into the trach. Okay, I've reached the bifurcation, pull out half an inch, and then on and off in swirling motions, I'm going to be sucking the secretion. Okay, if there's a lot of secretions, then it may be some stuff dangling from the end. There may be secretions in the tubing. So the way I'll take care of that is I will clean my tubing by allowing just some more of the sterile water to go through it. Okay, and then I'm ready again. But of course, I have a patient on the other end of this that I have to be constantly looking at and assessing, right? So maybe I feel like the patient needs a little bit of a break and maybe a little bit more um, oxygen. So I can always, with my non-dominant hand, pick this up, attach it to the trach, and give a few additional breaths if I felt that I needed to do that. But again, it has to be with my non-sterile hand. If I needed to move this closer to me, how would I do that, my, my family? Right, I could do it by the bottom. Again, this is a non-sterile glove, so I can't touch the inside, but I can touch the area that's non-sterile. Okay, and then if I needed to do it again, I could put it in, reach the bifurcation, pull out a half an inch, and then in a circular motion, go ahead and suction. All right, we looked in your book, it says no more than 5 to 15 seconds, and you can understand why, because if you're suctioning, again, you're pulling out the oxygen, so you don't want to kind of stay camped out there for a long time, right? That's not good for your patient. When you're all done, you just loop that up in your hand, and then put your glove 
inside out over it, and then just take off the second glove. Just throw everything away. Okay? And then you want to, of course, keep looking at your patient. A lot of times uh, you may need to hook them back up to their oxygen or their humidity mat, their collar that they wear. Okay, any questions? Anything that didn't seem to uh, quite make sense or that you need um, clarification on? You said about the stuff you said before you put the gloves on. Yes, it's every yeah. It's all set up. Um, it can uh, you know it can be on or it could be off. But all you should have to do is just turn it on. Yeah. So it's already there's already a canister. You should already know that it works. Because did you see we kind of tested it earlier? Yeah. And that's a whistle. Is that not? Like, that's the whistle. Um. Like, kind of packaging that way. It does look more like a whistle. Yeah, kind of like long grain thin. That's a very good question. That would be the nurse's responsibility to make sure that you're not allowing it to get too full. So usually what we do is these just come right off, we cap them off, and we throw the whole container away for suctioning. There's other times where we actually need to, depending on what's being suctioned, we may need to measure it. But um, you know, for secretions, you're not usually measuring that or you're standing. So this is just be all capped off and thrown away in the trash can. Um, yeah, usually we would we might bag it up, and unless it had blood in it, we would probably just put it into regular regular trash. Yeah. You um, if you think about the trig, at some point it ends right about here, right, and it bifurcates into the two main bronchi. So when you when you, you can't go into it like a bronchi, so you're going to meet resistance. It's going to stop. You're going to feel like I can't get it anymore. So that's when you want to pull it back up about a half an inch, and then start your spiral out. All right. Any other questions? It does suck. So the whole thing is one big suction thing. When the when the hole is covered, now it's sucking from the um, thing at the end. Yeah. All right. Thank you.